The Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program is an important program for West Virginia. Each year it provides approximately a half million dollars in vouchers for income eligible senior citizens to spend at participating farmers markets throughout the state. Participants must be 60 or older and they must fall within certain percentage of the federal poverty level, which varies year to year. Program providers at the federal, state, and local levels must treat all applicants and participants fairly and should guard against attitudes that can lead to civil rights violations. Prejudice, which is a set of rigid and unfavorable attitudes towards a particular group that are formed without considering facts. Stereotyping, which is believing preconceived and often oversimplified generalizations about a particular group of people, regardless of whether the belief is positive or negative. And discrimination, which is differing treatment based on a distinction between one person or group and others, either intentionally, by neglect, or by the actions or lack of actions arising from prejudice against a protected class. Civil rights protections under this program are not the same thing as equal employment opportunity protections. The U.S. Constitution, along with numerous federal laws and regulations, guarantees that protected classes cannot be discriminated against based on their particular status. While all U.S. citizens share basic protections of their civil rights, protected classes receive specific protection based on their particular circumstances, which include race, color, national origin, age, sex, and disability. State agencies, local agencies, and other subrecipients must demonstrate compliance with civil rights legal requirements. In West Virginia Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program, the state agency is the West Virginia Department of Agriculture that administers the program. Local agencies are the senior centers that enroll participants and distribute coupons, and the subrecipients are the farmers markets and stands that accept and redeem coupons. Let's call all three levels program providers for short. Senior citizens who receive the coupons will call participants, beneficiaries, or applicants when that's appropriate. Program compliance must be demonstrated in eight areas, civil rights training, civil rights assurances, public notification, complaints of discrimination, racial and ethnic data collection, limited English proficiency, disability discrimination, compliance reviews, and resolution of noncompliance. USDA may review the activities of state providers to determine compliance with civil rights requirements. WVDA may also review senior centers and individual farmers markets for compliance. Any significant findings must be provided in writing to the reviewed entity and to USDA Food and Nutrition Services. There are three levels of compliance reviews, pre-award, routine, and special review. Pre-award reviews occur to ensure that state and local agencies have satisfied non-discrimination requirements related to disabilities. Routine reviews are conducted to ensure that state and local providers are operating the program in a way that protects the civil rights of participants. Special reviews may be conducted on a scheduled or unscheduled basis to follow up on previous findings of noncompliance. To investigate reports of either non-compliance by other agencies, media, or grassroots organizations regarding a specific incident or policy in response to a history of statistical underrepresentation of particular groups. When a pattern of complaints of discrimination become apparent, a factual finding that program providers are not fulfilling any civil rights requirement will result in steps being taken to immediately obtain voluntary compliance. A finding's effective date is the date of written notice to the reviewed entity. We'll now look at each of these program compliance areas. The first compliance area is civil rights assurance. This means that providers must promise to abide by federal non-discrimination requirements. A compliance statement must be included in any agreements among USDA, state and local agencies, and subrecipients. Providers must be in compliance with civil rights requirements prior to approval of federal financial assistance. Civil rights training is what we're doing here today with this video. WVDA is required to ensure that all providers, including its own program staff, undergo civil rights training annually. 
new employees or volunteers at any level who contact participants or their records must also take this training before they become involved in the program. Senior centers, therefore, must require this training for their employees and for participating farmers. The good thing is this video is readily available and it provides the necessary training. It's available online at www.wvagriculture.org and on DVD by request. Not every aspect of this video is applicable to every level of the program, but everyone involved must view this video. The goal of this video training are to provide knowledge of participant rights and provider responsibilities, ensure equal and consistent treatment of all applicants and beneficiaries, eliminate illegal barriers that obstruct people from full participation in the program, foster an atmosphere of dignity and respect for all, encourage a customer service orientation for all applicants and beneficiaries, minimize perceptions of favoritism, even if unintentional, all providers should train their workers, whether paid or volunteer, regarding collection and use of data, effective public notification systems, complaint procedures, compliance review techniques, resolution of non-compliance, requirements for reasonable accommodation of persons with disabilities, requirements for language assistance, conflict resolution, customer service, Customer service is effectively communicating with customers, responding to their needs, valuing their worth, and exhibiting excellence through courtesy, confidence, and enthusiasm. When conflicts with applicants or participants do arise, providers should identify the problem based on the information the customer gives you. Determine a solution depending on the specifics of the conversation and your knowledge of your organization. A follow-up call to the customer solution may be necessary. Make sure the customer agrees to your proposed solution. Otherwise, your solution will be resolving nothing. You and the customer should agree what is to be done, when it is to be done, and by whom. If it is not possible, suggest an alternative. Follow up with the customer personally to make sure that the customer has been satisfied. Public notification is another compliance area. All USDA food and nutrition programs require specific forms of notice to participants of program details. West Virginia senior farmers market providers must prominently display the And Justice for All poster, which can be obtained through the West Virginia Department of Agriculture. Inform applicants and potentially eligible persons of the availability of the program and the steps necessary for participation. Inform applicants, participants, and potentially eligible persons of their program rights and responsibilities. Advise applicants and participants at the service delivery point of their right to file a complaint, how to file a complaint, and the complaint procedures. Make program information available to the public upon request. Inform potentially eligible people of programs or changes in the programs. Convey the message of equal opportunity in all photos and other graphics. Provide appropriate information in an alternative format for people with disabilities and in the appropriate languages for people with limited English proficiency. All information materials must include a non-discrimination statement. At a minimum, the non-discrimination statement or a link to it must be included on the homepage of the program information website. This is the full text of the non-discrimination statement. At a minimum, the full non-discrimination statement should be on application forms, notification of eligibility or ineligibility, notice of adverse action form, program homepage, public information including program literature. The non-discrimination statement is also available in Spanish. A shorter version may also be used when it's impractical to use the longer statement. Discrimination complaints may be made by or on behalf of any person in a protected class. Complaints shall be accepted and forwarded to USDA. Complaints must be filed within 180 days from the alleged act of discrimination. Complaints may be written, verbal, or anonymous. State agencies or local agencies may develop their own complaint forms, but the use of such forms cannot be a prerequisite for acceptance. West Virginia does not have its own form and uses the USDA complaint form. A separate civil rights complaint log shall be maintained by the state, local agencies, or subrecipients if applicable. 
Confidentiality is extremely important and must be maintained. Complaints, including verbal ones, should include as much information as can practically be obtained, but should be passed along to WVDA and then to USDA immediately, regardless of the amount of information provided. Examples of important items to include, if possible, are the name, address, and telephone number of the complainant, the location and name of the organization or office where the alleged incident occurred, the nature of the incident or action, the names, title, and business addresses of persons who may have knowledge of the discriminatory action, the dates during which the alleged discriminatory actions occurred, the basis for the alleged discrimination. Retaliation for making a complaint is also prohibited. Retaliatory behavior can result in a finding of discriminatory retaliation even if the original complaint filed by the individual is baseless. Retaliation means negative treatment of someone because they complained about discrimination or testified as a witness in an investigation. Retaliation could involve a denial of service, harassment, intimidation, or other actions or omissions. WBDA must pass along discrimination complaints within five days of receipt. Only essential personnel should be made aware of complaints on the way up the chain. This minimizes the chance of retaliation against complainants because only a few people will even know a complaint has been filed. As a means of monitoring civil rights compliance, state agencies shall establish a system for the collection of racial, ethnic data of each person applying for and receiving benefits. Applicants shall be assured that the information is required for and used for statistical purposes only and has no effect on eligibility criteria. Data should be collected at the point of application and retained at the service delivery area. Data collected must include ethnicity, either Hispanic or Latino or not Hispanic or Latino. Race, one or more of the following. American Indian or Alaskan Native, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, or White. Limited English proficiency refers to people who do not speak English as their primary language or who have a limited ability to read, speak, write, or understand English. Program providers must take reasonable steps to assure meaningful access to their programs and activities by such people. Factors to consider in addressing LEP. Number of LE people within the eligible population, frequency with which LEP individuals contact the program, nature and importance of the program to the LEP population, resources available, and their cost. A variety of laws prohibit disability discrimination in federal food and USDA food and nutrition programs. A person who has a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities has a record of such an impairment or is regarded as having such an impairment is considered to be disabled. Major life activities means functions such as caring for oneself, performing manual tasks, walking, seeing, hearing, speaking, breathing, learning, and working. Functions of the immune system, normal cell growth, digestive, bowel, bladder, neurological, brain, respiratory, circulatory, cardiovascular, endocrine, and reproductive functions are also included. For more information, contact WVDA Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program Coordinator Connie Tully at 1900 Canal Boulevard, Charleston, West Virginia, 25305. The telephone number is 304-558-2210, or you can email ctolley, T-O-L-L-E-Y, at wvda.us. You can also contact USDA FNS, Mid-Atlantic Regional Civil Rights Director, Michelle Sazzo, Mercer Corporate Park, 300 Corporate Boulevard, Robbinsville, New Jersey, 08691. The telephone is 609-259-5061 and the email michelle.sazo, S-A-Z-O, at fns.usda.gov.